Okay, hello and welcome to session four. Thank you again for um, continuing to participate in this, even though our worlds are kind of upside down right now. I do appreciate um, you continuing your participation in this as it is helping um, me complete my class for this semester. So here's the overview of session. So right now, this is session four. Um, last session was we finished up the discussion plans and then discussions were taking place in the classroom. So now this session um, is focused on analyzing the prompts, how students responded to them and reflecting on those. Um, and then as you can see, we have two more sessions after this, um, which I will give you some more information on later in this presentation and throughout email about how we will um, finish up those other two. So today, um, as I stated, we are evaluating exchanges for productivity or we're looking for compelling evidence that student met the learning objective. And then we're also going to look at features of productive prompts, kind of see what kind of language was used, um, what did the text do to help, help the students, and so on. So we're going to go over a couple examples of productive prompts, um, and then you'll kind of be able to practice a little bit on your own. So this prompt is, this first one is from one of my classmates. She is a third grade teacher, I believe. Um, and the text was Finding Winnie, which is a picture book about the true story of Winnie the Pooh. It's super cute, and I highly recommend reading it either to yourself or reading it to your students. Anyways, this text segment, um, you can kind of see over on the left-hand column is the actual text that this discussion revolved around to give you some top, 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 ooh, give you some context. The next column states what the teacher wanted the students to learn from this text. Um, and then the last column is the actual discussion that took place between the students. So I've highlighted three student responses and part of the prompt. As we can see, it was asking students to predict why they thought the colonel would be concerned that Harry was coming to war with this bear. Um, and then Lorelai feels that the bear could die because it's in war. Um, Owen is concerned that the bear might hurt a soldier because the bear itself could be considered dangerous. And then Chandler says that it could be a distraction and one of the soldiers could get hurt because they're looking at the bear instead of paying attention to where their gun is aimed. So each of these responses show evidence of their learning. The teacher wanted them to establish reasons why um, the colonel would be concerned and each of their responses obviously meet that learning target. So these are clear um, clear responses that they have, that there is evidence of their learning. Um, and then when we look at the prompt, I had highlighted the first three words, which is predict why might. And using the word might makes this prompt very open-ended. It gives the students the idea that there are multiple possible responses. And as we can see, you know, students came up with um, various predictions, and all predictions make make sense. None of them are kind of out in left field or anything like that. They all make very clear sense um, of why it might be an issue to bring this bear. So again, the three students would have highlighted that is evidence of their learning because it directly um, matches or goes with the learning target that the teacher had established. The next example 
This is another one from one of my classmates who teaches middle school. So the discussion was focused on an article on the Holocaust. Again, you can see the text over on the left-hand side and then um, the transcription over on the right-hand side. I don't have the learning target for this example, but I think just from the prompt and the student responses that it's very clear there is evidence of learning. So the teacher wanted students to visualize the scene of Jack being taken away from his family. And Natalie and Taylor, those first two students, responded that there was panic. And Devon talked about the fear that everyone had because they didn't know what was happening. So again, these student responses show evidence of their learning because they are able to speak on exactly what they were visualizing. Um, the prompt was written in a very clear way. Okay, the teacher specifically asked them to visualize what they were hearing from the author. So this was a great example of a productive prompt. Okay, the next one is um, an example from my discussion um, that I had with my students on hidden figures, which obviously you're familiar with as we have worked with it in other sessions. So um, here I want you to actually pause the the presentation video um, and switch to the Google Doc. So I'm actually going to show you that. So um, the link to the Google Drive, when you click on it, it brings you to this screen. And I've added some other things since the last time we have met. But you want to click on session four for right now. And then each of you have a document. And if I just open up one to show you. So these are some guided notes to go along with the presentation. The first um, section here with the modeling, those just show you the two examples of Finding Winnie and the Holocaust article that I literally just talked about. Um, I just put it here in case you wanted to reference back, reference back to it without having to, you know, go back and try to find it in the presentation. So that's just there for you. But then there's this part here with the guided practice. Um, so this is where we're at at this point in the presentation. So what I want you to do is pause me talking and um, you're going to look at the um, you're going to look at this it loads up here you're going to look at the learning target I had and then the um, exchange between myself and the students and I just want you to um, explain in that box on the Google Doc why this is a productive prompt and then once you have done that then you can come back to the presentation here. Okay, so now that you have shared your thoughts on that Google Doc, I'm going to share my thoughts on the ex exchange. So here I have highlighted, again, um, some of the students' responses that clearly show their learning. So Yanaya and Micah were responded about how good at math she was, which was needed for Dorothy to be able to get this job. And then um, down towards the end of the prompt is when Kendra and Savannah speak on what exactly um, were the reasons that it seemed impossible for her to get the job. As you can see, um, Kendra realized that it was because she was black. And then Savannah had some knowledge that at this time women 
weren't really allowed to have a job like working at NASA. So um, you're going to, again, pause the video here, and you're going to go back to the document. And below here is a compare. So just what are some of the similarities and differences between my thoughts, which I have um, kind of what I said, again, right under here. Um, and what your and your thoughts that you put up here in this box, um, I just want you to kind of compare our ideas down here. So it's not really that there is a right or a wrong, um, because there really is no right or wrong answers here. Um, it's just kind of to compare our thinking between it. Um, so once you complete that section, you can then come back to the presentation again. Okay, so now that you kind of practiced on your own, it's now your turn to analyze one of your own productive prompts. Um, if you do not have access to your transcript or your discussion video recording, um, then I have provided another example from my Hidden Figures discussion that you can, um, you can use to complete this part. Um, so I'm going to exit back out of the presentation so I can go back to this document just to show you. Um, so underneath where we just kind of wrote your thoughts and then compared them to mine, underneath that I kind of have an independent practice. Um, so you can find one of your productive prompts and put in what you wanted the students to gain from it, the actual transcription, so what you said to the kids and what they responded with, and then your explanation of why this is considered productive. Um, so what is, you know, the compelling evidence, and then what are some of the features of the prompt um, that make this productive? If you don't have a prompt from your own discussion, then down here is where I give an example from the hidden figures that you can then use. So I already have the learning target, and I obviously already have the transcription, so you would be filling out this, why is it productive? So you only have to do this part if you don't have um, your own transcription to use. Okay, um, I'm going to go back to the presentation for one last thing, and then that will be it. So after you um, analyze a prompt on your own, um, you would have completed the work for session four. And then the work for session five is you do need another text. Um, so obviously, you know, it's probably going to be something that we find that you find online. Reading A to Z is really great because you can um, find text, you know, specifically at certain reading levels. Um, I got a, a short text off of there for my second discussion that I had planned. So if you need the school's username and password, I can get that to you. Um, and then obviously, you know, there's news ELA or common lit that you could access, or if you have another idea, or if you have picture books at home and you wanna use one of those, um, you know, it really doesn't matter, whatever you would like to use. Um, and you can begin kind of segmenting the text and building on the central understanding. I will have um, a document in the folder for session five in the Google Drive um, that you'll see. Um, so session five, I will be sending out later this week. And then after that, there's just that last one for number six, and then we will be done. Okay, so let me know if you have any questions. Um, I'm always available to meet on Zoom, like if it's just easier to kind of talk it out that way instead of trying to email back and forth. Um, obviously, I'm going to be home here, um, so I can be available pretty much whenever throughout the day. Okay, thank you once again for
um, continuing to participate.